In this video for beginners, I'm going to show you how to make this 3D object in Fusion 360. Let's get started. In my backyard, I have a metal fence with a bunch of these plastic toppers. Um, they're all in like really terrible condition. This is probably the best one that I could find. But what I wanted to do here was I wanted to 3D print some glow in the dark um, caps, I guess. I think it would look really cool at nighttime. I'm curious to see how long they glow for um, and that type of thing. So I figured I would take some dimensions. We're going to make a fusion sketch out of this, make a part, print it, and all that kind of stuff. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take some dimensions of this. I'm going to put them on my iPad here just so that I have everything on in one place. I'm not going back and forth between fusion and measurements constantly. So the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to take the outside dimension here on. It's just a bit too big for my calipers. So we're going to have to kind of just assume. So this is... 154.6 and I think I'm just going to do 155. I think we'll be totally fine. We can always increase that later on. So 155 millimeters is our bottom measurement here. And then what I'm going to do here for these um, corners is I'm going to measure how far in this peak is roughly, right? This might take a bit of trial error, trial and error, but you know, it is what it is. So this is 13 millimeters in. So this peak here is 13 millimeters in from the edge. So I'm going to put that in here, millimeters from the edge. And then the height of this peak is, Twenty six and a half, let's say twenty six point five, and then I think the last dimension I need is this center dimension here, which is the center of the piece, and it looks like it's 24 millimeters. So, I think that's all we need because we'll design this first with our, our dimensions, right? 13 millimeters in, 26.5 up, that'll give us this angle. And then once we come into the center and we do our flat spot, this will automatically give us the length for these here. So, um, pretty easy. Let's get the uh, thickness here, 1.6. We're going to go two millimeters just for 3D printing, make it a little bit a little bit thicker. And I can easily change this after, go three millimeters thick, whatever I want. So that should be good. Let's pop over to Fusion and do a sketch. Here we are in Fusion 360. So what I'm going to be doing here is I'm going to be taking those sketches that I just took, put into my iPad, and I'm going to be putting them into Fusion. And this is very powerful because we can go ahead and edit the sketch afterwards and it will change the model. So it's very powerful for if you're going to be starting a model in Fusion, I highly recommend you try to start with a sketch when possible. So what we're going to do here is on my keyboard, I'm just going to press L, and what that does is it's a shortcut for a line. I generally just have built up a um, muscle memory for this. I press L so I can get into sketch mode. If you want to get into sketch mode without the keyboard shortcut, you can simply just go up here and click create sketch, and that will do the th same thing for you. So we're going to click on this face here, which is our top orientation so we're going to be looking down on the part and I'm going to just simply start applying my measurements into my sketch that we took so up here you can see you can do a line you'll also see in brackets right beside line 
there is a keyboard shortcut, which is L. That's generally what I, I like to use. Same thing with rectangle, keyboard shortcut is R. And then the other one that I normally use is a circle, which is the keyboard shortcut C. So when you choose a line, you can go ahead and put in your dimensions. So we always want to start from the origin, which is this middle point here you can see. This way, when we're mirroring things, they will mirror correctly across the part, and I can show you that a little bit later. The first dimension that we measured is the total length of our part. So I'm going to press L here. I'm going to create a line, and I know my part is 155 millimeters long. Now, we're starting from the center point of our object, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in 155, and I'm going to divide that by 2 because we're just doing one side here. And I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. I'm pressing L, doing a line. I'm going 155 divided by two. Now we have our part, basically our sketch, starting in the center of our grid here. And this way, it's much easier for us to then start mirroring things across. So that's the bottom length of our part. The next thing that I'm going to put in here is the distance from the edge to our corner, if that makes sense. So I measured from the edge of my fence part here inward, it was 13 millimeters. And then I measured from the bottom of my part up to its peak, it's 26.5. So again, I'm pressing L, and I'm going to type in 26.5 here. Now that we have these two measurements, I can go ahead and hit L, make a line, and we simply just draw a line to these points. And that automatically gives me that angle of that part that we're trying to replicate. I can do the same thing for the other side. We're going to move in 13 millimeters. I'm going to create a Another line going up 26.5, like I did on the other side. And I'm going to just simply do another line from point to point and get that line. Now what I need to do is I need to figure out how thick this part is in the middle. So I measured from the outside 6 millimeters. So I'm going to come up here for 6 millimeters. And... I know the width of that flat spot in the middle of my part was 24 millimeters, which would be 12 on either side, or you could do 24 divided by 2 would also work. So you can let Fusion do the math, or you can just do it if it's simple. So again, I'm doing uh, 12 on each side. So now that I have this flat spot in the middle, I can now figure out the angle of the remaining remainder of this object by just connecting these two lines. So as you can see here, we have a top-down sketch of our fence topper. And this is very powerful now because we have all of these dimensions that we can now edit, which will actually change the body that we're going to create here in a couple seconds. So the final thing I want to do is you can see here, this is just a sketch with a bunch of lines. There's no actual thickness to this part. So what I want to do now is I want to do an offset of this sketch so that I can get a thickness for this part. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go up to the top under Offset. And I'm going to simply just click on these um, lines. And we have Chain Selection checked here. So it'll automatically add more as I click. Now, if you notice here, it's actually closing off this middle part here because we have a defined line right in the middle. I cannot click on the other side of this sketch. So what we can do is we'll simply cancel out of this. I'm going to click on this middle line and I'm just going to delete it because we do not need this line in the middle. Now, you will notice that we have blue line here and we have a black line here. Blue lines are basically um, a line that is not completely defined. 
this means I can actually move this all around because there's no definition to the line. It's not constrained in every direction. These black lines, on the other hand, I cannot move. They are fully constrained. For this beginner's tutorial, you don't really need to, to worry about the difference so much, but that's what that means if you're seeing a blue line versus a black line. So let's try our offset again. We're gonna click on our lines. You'll notice it does not do an offset on the inside anymore, and we can now click on the entire part here. And we now have our offset of one millimeter. I know the thickness of my part was around 1.6. Because we're 3D printing this, I'm just gonna make a offset of two. So we can go ahead and hit enter. And now we have a offset of our exterior sketch on the inside. And this gives us some thickness to our part. So we can go ahead and finish the sketch now. And what we're going to do is we're going to extrude this so this is a face that it's created for us. We can just simply click on the faces holding control so that we can chain our selection. And we're gonna press E on our keyboard or extrude. So you'll see when I press E, it's coming up and asking me for a um, amount to extrude. And I know my part is 25 millimeters. So we're gonna head and extrude that. And Fusion has now created a body. We can see in our body selection here on the left, there is a body component here, or part, I should say. And we now have our sketch down at the bottom as well. So what I like to do is to create the bottom or top, depending on how you're looking at this, is I like to click on the surface where I want that, um, top piece in this case and I'm just going to go back into sketch mode fusion automatically will make any closed off sketch a um, face essentially so when I did that I simply just went out of the sketch and you can see now we have a face here I can simply click on that face press E for extrude and I can just go minus two millimeters and it will create a actual physical body here and connect that to our part. So as you can see, we have modeled our fence topper, the basic dimensions of our fence topper. All right, so what we can do now is we can now head and go ahead and, and edit our sketch if we have to, and this will actually change the body so if I go ahead and I'm gonna hide my body just for demonstration purposes, we're gonna bring back our sketch. I'm gonna right click on it and I'm going to edit my sketch. We can now see all the dimensions we put in previously and I can go ahead and start editing these dimensions. So for instance, let's say my angle on the left side was not correct. It was way off and I need to have uh, a tw this in by 26 millimeters instead of 13 millimeters. As soon as I click finish, we can now see our body follows that new sketch dimension. So sketches are very powerful because it saves you time if you need to modify the part after the fact. Now I'm gonna go up here and I'm just gonna undo what I just did because our sketch is correct. We like how this is. So my suggestion to you is once you have your object to a basic dimension and you can, you're able to print it in some form, for instance, this fence topper here, this is a good enough for me to print it out, even though it might not have the holes in the side that I want to clip into the fence and all that kind of stuff. I still recommend that you print the object out, test fit it, so that you can make any modifications first before you go ahead and start adding a whole bunch of features and things like that. And you may actually end up having to go back because all the features you added are now conflicting with a change you need to make. So make sure you 
print out your part, test it first once you get that basic dimension ready to go, and then start adding your polish on the very final version. Now, I will say you can definitely use Fusion 360 without doing sketches. A lot of my designs, I don't use sketches at all. Um, it works very well for me. Um, if you're gonna be doing this for a profession or a job, I would highly recommend that you learn the right way. But if you wanna just learn Fusion 360, this is for a hobby. I am a firm believer in use what, what works best for you. So for instance, you could come into Fusion and just start making objects if you want to. So if I come up here and I go, let's say make a square, so a rectangle, let's just draw a basic rectangle. We'll finish this and I'm just gonna extrude it. We're gonna extrude it here, 20 millimeters. You can go ahead and just make a new sketch if you want a hole in the middle of this instead of doing it all at once. So for instance, if I want a hole in the middle of this, we can do another sketch right on its surface. I'm gonna just draw a line right across. Fusion will automatically mark the center point here. I can go ahead and make a circle of eight millimeters, let's say. We can finish this sketch. And I can now use this circle to extrude a hole into my cube. So I went ahead and made a square with a circle into it, but I didn't make that all into a singular sketch. You can see here on the left, I have two separate sketches. I have a sketch for my circle and I have a sketch for my square. If you find this works better for you and you don't wanna put every single dimension into one sketch, you can absolutely do multiple sketches on multiple surfaces if this is the preferred way you like to use Fusion. Again, I can come in here, we can make a line on this side, and I can do another circle here of eight millimeters, and I can extrude this through. Fusion is very easy to get started with creating objects and stuff like this. And even, let's say, you started with a square, but you actually want to have some chamfered corners on here or some angles, you can come in here and add them after the fact if you want to. Your sketch does not have to reflect that. So it depends on the actual way you want to use Fusion 360 and what way you're comfortable with doing design. Sometimes I will make detailed sketches. Sometimes I will just completely throw sketches out the window and I'll just start modeling a body on its own. So that's a very uh, quick intro for all of you on Fusion 360. The best way to learn is just dive in. Um, watch some videos like this, very early beginner videos. The more you use Fusion, the more you will learn. I've always learned by doing, um, so I really like to watch a video, follow along in Fusion as I'm watching, and then you'll find once you get to a point, you just start take off, taking off and learning on your own. So thanks everyone for watching this. If you would like more Fusion tutorials, leave a comment down below. I do have some Fusion tutorials on my Patreon on how to design a 3D printer from scratch. If you're interested in those, feel free to check my link for my Patreon down below and join that. As always, guys, have fun, and I will catch you next time.